Hi, I'm Clark. In this video, I'm gonna explain how to install solar panels and controllers so you can charge the batteries in your life, be it a camper, a boat, any off-grid system. I've been living on a sailboat for 30 years now. I've designed my own power systems. I've uh, done this all from scratch and watched the evolution of technology. I'm probably as close to an expert as there is. I even designed my own regulators, print my own circuit boards. I mean, I'm deep in this. What I'm gonna talk about today is so incredibly simple. You barely have to know how to hook two wires together. And that is, how to harness the sun and turn it into electricity that you can use to power your life. This video is part of an electrical series that is a very deep dive into how electrical works, how DC systems work. This particular video is probably the lightest weight one. It's just how to get your solar panels to charge up your batteries. Really straightforward and basically anybody can do it with devices now. Today we're gonna to go in detail on how to put solar panels on one of these, a camper. Campers have very, very basic DC electrical systems. They have a battery. They usually come with a battery charger, so if you plug them into a AC current in the campground or at your home, you can charge that battery. They have a way of charging the battery from the vehicle, kind of right where you plug in the trailer wiring connection and that can give some power to the battery, though modern vehicles don't give very much power down that line. Beyond that, that's it. We're currently out in the high deserts of Utah. It is really great here. I highly recommend it. But what we don't have here is a way to plug in the camper to get power. So we have to make our own power. Now, if we didn't have the solar panels, we would have to have a portable generator and honestly, the way campers are and the chargers that come with them, we'd have to run that a lot because it can't put out very much power into the batteries. You have to listen to it all the time. You have to carry it. They weigh like 50 pounds. You have to put gas in it. You have to change the oil and you have to maintain it. They're always screwing up their carburetors and they need cleaning. I prefer to use solar. Solar panels just sit there and with almost no maintenance, I mean, really, the only maintenance might be to wipe the bird crap off them occasionally, they make power. They sit in the sun and just lay there like they're getting a suntan and charge up your batteries. You don't have to turn them on, they just turn on when the sun comes. If you have a controller like we use, you don't have to worry about turning them off when your batteries are fully charged. They just do the job thanklessly all the time. It's also possibly the cheapest way to get power into your batteries reliably. Solar panels used to be crazy expensive and you only saw them on satellites and such. I know the first one I bought, a 120 watt panel cost me like $700. And that's only because I went in with some buddies and we bought a whole box of them. Now it's like a dollar a watt and uh, why not use them? What we're gonna do is start with that basic core, battery, charge sources and loads. Loads being your lights and your fans and everything else in there that runs off the battery. Now, all we have to do to add to this is run a new line down from the solar panels going through a charge controller into the battery. First, you start out with some solar panels. Panels kind of come in two flavors nowadays. They have the flexible ones and the ones in a frame. Now the ones in the frame are much better, and if you can use them, you should. They're more efficient, they're gonna last longer, and they're much cheaper. But on this particular installation, I decided to go with the flat, flexible panels. Don't flex them much, they really aren't good at that. I chose that because I could screw them down to the roof, and there was no worry of them blowing away as we go down the highway, because, you know, we can have 80 mile an hour winds if we're doing 70 very easily. Uh, this camper belongs to my parents, and I wanted something they would never have to think of again. So I went with these flexible panels this time. They're working okay. From the panels, you run some wires down to a charge controller. Charge controllers do a lot nowadays, which makes your life simple. You can rig those panels up in parallel or in series. It doesn't even really matter. Whatever voltage is being given to the charge controller, and lo as long as it's one of the modern MPPT, multi-point power tracking charge controllers, it will take that power 
it'll actually kick it into a magnetic field, collapse the field, and turn it into the perfect voltage to charge your batteries as efficiently as it can be done. I've been using the EP Ever Charge controllers. I've got two of them on the boat. I've got one in this camper. I'm really quite happy with them. Uh, they aren't quite as good as some of the more expensive ones as far as speed of changing gears, but it doesn't really matter. By the end of the day, they're all gonna put out within a couple percent the same amount of power. You take the lines coming out of that, you just hook them to the battery. Now you're gonna want a fuse or two in this system. It's just good wiring practice and they go here and here. Solar panels have the downside too. First off, you need the sun. So if you're either camped in a heavily wooded area or just plain cloudy, you're not gonna get much power out of your panels. Generators are much more reliable even though they're loud. You pull that rope, if they're in good working order, they will put out power. Solar being solar, and it can only put out power sometimes, you know, when the conditions are right, might mean for a given amount of power in a day, you might need more storage. You know, make hay when the sun shines, grab that power when the sun shines, and get it into batteries. If you only have this much battery, that's how much you'll have throughout the night or throughout the next cloudy day. If you have double the size of battery, well, you're gonna be able to go farther between charging cycles. Your camper likely came with a lead battery, and that's fine. It's very nice technology from a while ago. If you're just planning on using the lead battery that's already in your camper, you're done. That's it, it'll charge. If you want to augment that with some more battery, which is a good idea, uh, and you decide to go with lithium because it's kind of the modern way of doing batteries, I've got a very easy way to throw some lithium in that system and have it work great. So how do you add lithium? Well, you can put some lithium in, throw away your lead, and there you go. Except, now all of your charge controllers have to know about the new charging regime the lithium requires. And this um, poses problems. I haven't found a solar regulator that really does a good job charging lithium. I believe it does some things that will shorten the life of the lithium. Also, the other charge source you have, your um, battery charger that, when, that comes into play when you're hooked into the mains or the generator, that probably doesn't have a clue how to charge lithium. And it's gonna to try to charge it like lead, which will hurt lithium. Also, your vehicle charging through the trailer electrical connection, even though it doesn't put out a lot of power, once your battery gets charged, it will put out too much power. Again, it thinks you have a lead battery back there and it's going to treat your battery like lead. All of these reasons um, make me feel that we needed another way of doing this. And I developed something called the Bank Manager. The Bank Manager Plus is a device you put between a bank of lead and a bank of lithium. And it manages those two battery banks. So you get to keep your old lead battery, just add lithium right in parallel with this device in between, and it does some really cool things. It will watch over the lithium, keep it from getting overcharged, and it also organizes a system such that the lithium gets discharged first before your lead. So you don't cycle the lead as much. Lead won't last that long. Lithium is very, very long life, and you want to put all the cycles in the lithium side. Anyway, this is how you would install one of those. You put in your lithium battery, physically connect it. They're very light. They don't have to be mounted as low as the lead. They can be mounted sideways, upside down, wherever you find space. Get that installed. Connect the negatives together. Just the two batteries negatives right together. Now you're gonna connect the positives together, but through my bank manager. And the bank manager will intelligently make the connection where they should be connected and disconnect them when they shouldn't be. And basically just take over the maintenance of this system. If you're interested in one of these, uh, take a look in the description below and follow the link. There'll be a better description of what's going on there and an order form so you can fill it out and have one mailed to you. If you're setting up a system like this and you have questions, and I don't blame you, this is very different than other things you may have done in your life. We have a Patreon page, as many YouTubers do. Our top tier basically gets you my phone number. Um, I'd say half the people that sign up for that tier are doing it just out of the goodness of their heart to help us out and, and show that we uh, make good content. But the other half are signing up uh, to talk to me about designing something, usually a boat electrical system, but campers, boats, 
same thing. The electrons don't know they're floating and uh, I can help you out. So if you want some more help with anything along those lines or anything you think I can help you with, sign up for the Dream Believers and we'll chat on the phone. Thanks for watching and uh, goodbye from Emily and I, currently cruising in our RV, but normally on Sailing Vessel Temptress. Bye.